Why do you hate the office again? Now that we're rolling? It's just been dick ridden into the ground by everybody around you from ages 14 into however old you are at any point in time. I mean, that's a fair point. I yeah, hate... so you just hate it because it's, sorry. No, we were going to say, well. You just I hate was... it because other people like it. No, I hate it because there's no way to escape it and it's lost all novelty. And you know that kind of trope where you hear a joke for like the 14th time and it starts to get a little less funny? That's everything that's ever been said in The Office. I get that, but at the same that's time, fair. me and Zach make references to The Office all the time and you laugh, like a good genuine laugh, and mm-hmm. you're like, that was from the office. like, that's from The Office, and you're like, no, it's not. Right, because those ones are actually funny, probably because I don't remember them being from The Office. I, I haven't heard them 14 plus times. I can make a point that The Office is a TV show where it's like, it wants a general, a big general audience, so us as smart People that have an actual good sense of humor, we laugh at the, the, the layer underneath parts. Yeah, where it's other people just go over their head. The and they laugh. Parts. They look like it's a fart joke in the office, and they're you know yeah. pointing at the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that kind of shit. And then we like the smart jokes. That's the difference. Yeah. The Rick and Morty style jokes. Thank you. Yes. So there's but there's value there for everybody, and that's what makes it great. I'm not a fan of inclusivity. I'll print that on a T-shirt and have it to you by next week. <laughs> Thank you. All right, all right, all right. Speaking of inclusivity. By all means. Go ahead and include right now anything that you guys watched media-wise in the past week. I, for one, finished the (gasps) two-season Amazon Prime special Fleabag. Good. Mm. I think the first season was a little better, but big fan. First season a little better? What made it better? better. Uh, A little funnier. uh, Plays more into the edginess, whereas the second season seems like there was more of a, a character arc involved. Which was fine. It was still good, but British people can only take me so far. Mm. Oh, they're British. Very British. British. Mm. Good try. <laughs> Damn it. Zoe I'm James Bond. Twat. <laughs> Worst try. Uh, okay. And that's it. Fleabag. Are we yeah. going to score it? No. <laughs> Damn, not even worthy of a score. Heard. Heard loud and clear. Word. Uh, I've still been watching James Bond. Oh yeah, I saw you watch oh, on Her Majesty's Secret Service yes. the one I asked about. Which is Christopher Nolan's favorite out of them all. And yeah, it's my favorite old one so far. It's, uh, I mean, it's, I don't know. You can only go so far, like get past the fact that it's so old and the action sequences obviously are just like so lame because of that. But this was the first one that like, it's very like drawn out, like atmospheric. It kind of feels like some of the newer ones just in terms of like the theme and stuff. So it's really stylistic. That's what I'm looking for. Ooh. Uh, on a sense that the one, the ones in the '60s before it were not. This was on Her Majesty's Secret Service in 1969, um, and yeah, far and away the best one so far. Also, the first one without Sean Connery. Ooh. Yeah, but okay. I got lots to go. Okay, and how's Ted coming along for you? Uh, it's something I've been watching with Ashlyn. We haven't had a chance to mm. sit down and watch it for a while. I see, but still good. I want to start Archer. I'm going to start that soon. Dude, I've thought about that. I feel like, Dennis, have you seen Archer? That seems like some shit that you would fuck with. No, but I really like that guy's voice. Mm-hmm. He who voices also... It's not It's not the guy that voices Jerry in Rick and Morty. That's Chris Parnell. Oh, shit. Bob's Burgers, Archer, mm. the other stuff. He was in um, Master of None with Aziz and Zari oh. for a couple Aziz. guest cameo spots. It's crazy how many like characters voice actors play. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're a good voice actor, you play like so many different characters across so many shows i saw something recently that was like this girl voice someone on like every childhood cartoon that we've ever seen ever yep i was like holy shit that's i mean it's a chick that voiced timmy turner from fairly odd parents i think um, she's in everything maybe yeah i don't know danny phantom was on there and some yeah fairly odd parents i don't know who she voiced but yeah crazy shit i like it the voice of robin from teen titans the original also voices like 17 other different animated characters not even just cartoons like 3d animation i think he's in some pixar stuff as background characters and he voices like some mortal Kombat characters mm-hmm. from time to time yeah dope They're very fun being able to point <laughs> yep piece those people together like that um i also like how they don't suffer from the uh chris evans my chris evans syndrome mm. matt Damon oh. syndrome dude the art trick i totally suffers from that Oh, you think you like you hear him and every you know other things, and you're like, oh, this guy again. I'm not oh this guy again, but it's definitely that guy. Oh, I feel like I can't tell generally, but oh. maybe I don't know. Well, it's like Family Guy. All the characters in Family Guy are voiced basically by the same people, and then they're correlating TV shows across the board, 
and I know it's their voice, but I don't care. I just feel like yeah, a yeah. Well, okay, in Family Guy, he does a really good job of having a way different voice for Peter, Brian, Quagmire, Tom Tucker, and the 19 other That's people fair. he does. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. It's, so it's about the quality and, and <laughs> yes. the flexibility of your chords, your vocal chords. It definitely means, makes it more impressive. Okay. I'll take it. Um, anything else to report media-wise? No, sir. No, sir. Dude, if I don't watch a movie here that's not for the podcast soon, I might just quit. Tell us about all the books you've been reading. Barely. I finished Dune. Yay. Thoughts. Thoughts. Without any. Dune Part 2 is going to be great. And we can talk about this separately, but I've seen some fantastic things about Dune Part 2. Me too. That are like borderline unbelievably fantastic. That's neither here nor there. Oh, you just raised the bar. Well... Honestly, the audience. That's I'm glad watching. we're all going into it on the same page because <laughs> my bar is so far up my ass. Can I bitch about something real fast? In a good way. Sure. There yes. are Dune screenings that have already happened already in North America. Correct. We were talking about that before you got here. There was like an early fan screening. I thought it was tomorrow. What? Why are we doing this? You know, midnight releases used to be Thursday nights because movies come out on Friday, which I guess makes sense, but it's a little bit of a stretch. Now we're just digging that up and pillaging the grave of the idea of a well, movie release. It's a limited release. That's what those always happen. It's semi-normal. I would a limited release. It's two days or like three days before it should actually come out. Would you rather have the option to see it earlier or not? I would re- rather not, honestly. Okay, well, it, it affects, spreads it out the hype you, of a release, yeah. waiting in line all night in yeah, your but, costume for your sandworm fuck bucket. But to be <laughs> fair, the the initial, and if that's what you're referring to, the initial reviews and reactions that come out after the premiere is normally on average like two and a half to three weeks before it's a release to the general audience. Premier so if you have an issue with like reviews oh, yeah, no, and I don't stuff, care about the, re- oh, the premiere. That's for, that's for high class people that matter. Or people that live in New York and L.A basically no, that sure yeah. what he said um yeah so i finished dune I started reading a little life which is supposed to be really sad I'm reading it with dennis's girlfriend and by with dennis's girlfriend i mean she finished it two weeks ago and i'm 30 pages in so mm-hmm. um not so much parallel i watched some more of the bear and it's getting really good and i've got tears in my eyes several times very good wow would recommend the se- second season is going to close out very tastefully, I presume. No that, is, that is a sufficient amount of media. Um, yeah. Borderline. You don't need to put movies in there. I started scheduling movies and wa- movie viewings again. I used to just go on Apple Store and rent shit in bulk, like six <laughs> movies at a time. And then I'm like, okay, I have 30 days to watch these movies. You had to force yourself And honestly, it, it worked. But you can't justify it when everything's available to stream nowadays. So I, But I did start putting some shit in my calendar. I'm going to go see at Independent Picture House the shorts, uh, nominated shorts for documentary and live action. They're playing there. Nominated shorts? Like Oscar nominated shorts for Mm. like best animated picture, best animated short and best live action short. They're playing them in like all at the same time together. That's cool. In one viewing. So that'd be cool. Yeah. Give, Give us your review on that one. Yeah, I will. Next weekend. Um, okay, well, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Shitty Movie Review Podcast, hosted by your favorite cat dads. I'm Matt. I am Dennis. I'm Zach. And this is The Litter Box. Great song. Not sure so. what that was. Oh, I know exactly what yeah, that was. Yeah, see? Lead us in, please. This is Zach's pick, so he will be introducing and telling us what we watched this week. Take it away, Zach. Yes, we are watching the, or well, formerly highly anticipated follow-up to Jordan Peele's classic Get Out, uh, his second film that he directed, uh, 2019. So, thinking about that, it doesn't seem that long ago, but that's almost five years ago. Um, it's another horror movie uh, following Get Out. I'll go ahead and read the synopsis first. Uh, I don't. The synopsis kind of sucks. Husband and wife Gabe and 
Adeline Wilson take their kids to the beach out to their beach house, expecting to unplug and unwind with friends. But as night descends, their serenity turns to tension and chaos when some shocking visitors arrive uninvited. Um, I like that. It's mysterious. I guess it's not really the movie at all, but I wish that was a movie. No, I'm not gonna say anymore. Uh, <laughs> cast of this movie, we got, and I gotta be sure I say this correctly. Lupita Nyong'o uh, plays uh, the lead. I'll say the mom. Now, before getting into spoilers, she kind of plays. I guess everybody in this movie kind of plays two roles. I'll leave it at that. Um, and then the dad, played by Winston Duke, or also I should say Lupita, also stars in um, 12 Years a Slave. Uh, mm-hmm. I think she's best known for Black Panther. Um, and then it says she played in the all the Star Wars sequel trilogy. I do not remember that, the new sequel trilogy. She's probably a um, stormtrooper. Storm trooper. Yeah, they like putting them in there. Daniel Craig was a stormtrooper, which I thought was cool. Yeah, yeah they do random people in that. Um, and then Winston Duke, who's also best known for Marvel movies in Black Panther, uh, he also appeared in uh, Endgame and Infinity War. Um, and those are kind of just like the two best known people, or the mom and dad. There's two kids, uh, played by Evan Alex and Shahadi Wright Joseph. Um, for kid actors, they actually do a really good job in this movie, I think. I mean, I think the best other known one would be Elizabeth Moss. Um, mm. My girl. Which I only know from The Invisible Man, yes. which is kind of a decent film. She's also in The Handmaid's Tale. That's oh, that's who, yeah. She's June in that show. She's also Peggy Olsen in Mad Men. <gasps> oh, look at you. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's like, she's one of those Easter egg actresses. Yeah. Because she looks like, she always looks familiar. And everything she's in, I'm like, what is she in? Dude, Invisible know. Man was good. You didn't like that as much? Just decent? I didn't say it was bad. It was all right. Oh, I thought that was like a standout kind of. Huh. But also, yeah. following up on Lupita. Lupita. Lupita does not play a stormtrooper, and how dare we assume so. She plays Maz Kanata. <gasps> what? Maz Kanata, of course. Wait, actually, no shot. That's crazy. Shot. I like thinking about Maz's voice right now. Literally nothing. Really. The same. Like she does a crazy different voice then, which is mm. cool. Well, she's wow. uh, surprising. She's got some talent in the voicing industry, as we see in this movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. A lot we, of range. We'll get into that. Yeah, vocal range, for sure. Okay. Um. But yeah, another Jordan Peele movie need to be done. I was going to pick between this one, Us, and Nope, which I've also only seen one time, uh, but I went with this one. Dude, I thought when you said Jordan Peele, I was like, oh, he's saying Nope. nope. Yeah. You've been talking about that one forever. And I kind of regret not picking Nope. <gasps> Didn't we do a Nope episode? No, we did get out. We saw Nope. We saw it in the summer. And then like literally the next week we started the podcast, I think. Huh. Okay. Uh, got some litter box lore for you. Litter box lore. Um, all right. Perhaps I'll go first. Perhaps. Perhaps. Cool. Hmm. Upon first viewing, so I've seen this movie at release, which notably it was during COVID, during in this abandoned mall. So weird. Like I don't understand. It wasn't abandoned because of COVID. It was just like abandoned, abandoned. But there was a movie theater there that was still operational. So, like, we go in, and it's just, like, so eerie, and we'll talk about how, <laughs> it, freaky. how it links to the movie. But I walked out of that, and I was, felt like I was in a fucking fever dream, because it was, like, almost an extension of the movie, some parts of the movie. But I don't remember liking this movie all that much, and I think probably it was it was an extension of, um, or, like, comparing that to Get Out, and I was, like, the, it, the bar was so high, and I was, like, okay, this is gonna be sick, and... I don't know why I didn't like it. I feel like the parts that I thought I didn't like about it never happened or like, I don't know, misremembered. But I had a great time with it this time. Wow. Um, I love how quickly it just jumps into it. Like, no time is wasted to just get right into the meat of things. Um, extremely well acted. Lupita, did she get nominated for anything for this? Do we know? Because she, she should have. She should have won. I don't know what she was up against. And I honestly don't care because it was fantastic. <laughs> um really interesting story really i love the cinematography and the music uh, and the sound throughout the film um cool premise i wish there was a little bit more of kind of like some background we didn't really get much background we got some but not maybe as much as i would have liked um which we'll talk about when we get to spoilers but 
I don't know. I'm kind of hard pressed to not give this like a high seven or an eight. So maybe I'll start off at a seven point nine just to be convinced. Otherwise, assuming that one of you wants to convince, um, did it work for you as a horror movie since it's labeled as such? Or more of a brain uh, twister. Maybe like the initial like home invasion, which is mm. like part of the trailer, so not a spoiler, but um yeah, I think it was more of a thriller to me. But um, either way it was good. I wasn't trying to categorize it during the movie or felt mm-hmm. like it wasn't meeting my expectations in any way. So Cool. Yeah. Definitely enjoyed it more the second time. I'll start with seven point nine. Nice. I wasn't expecting that. Hmm. I am going to try my best to not play a comparison game for this episode because I'm a big fan of Get Out and I'm a pretty big fan of Nope. And this is the only JP movie that I haven't seen yet or I hadn't seen yet. And it's very clearly by him. It's his same style. It's his same sort of vibe and atmosphere throughout the entire movie. So it felt very familiar and I felt very at home because I like his other work. And it's definitely different in a lot of ways. And I don't know if that was necessarily something that played to its strength, in my opinion, but that could just be because I was expecting something like Get Out more so. So while I do think this movie was really, really entertaining and engaging, I don't know if I liked it all that much. Oh, no. That might have a lot to do with uh, the end. Uh, This movie put its hooks in me immediately. And I was once again ready to uh, be, be the biggest Jordan Peele fan in the world. <laughs> but it sort of started to lose its grasp on me as we go through the different acts for different reasons. We could mm-hmm. touch on it. But uh, it's definitely a good movie, right? Surely it's a good movie. Question mark. <laughs> uh, so here, I'll just... Um, hmm. I'm going to start it right on the teeter-totter, the center, the cent- the centrifuge. That's not the right word. Whoa. The teeter point. I'm going to put it at a five, and then I'm going to let you guys convince me whether or not it's good movie or bad movie, and don't try too hard because you'll you'll push me in the other direction. It's certainly a good movie. We know that's going to raise. Now, by how much? I don't know. Maybe not that much, but... Our conversation around what I didn't like and what mm-hmm. I did like will probably influence it the most. Okay. Wait, can I, before Zach, before you go, what... Um, quick synopsis. What did you find that was like the major differences you said? Like the differences between this and Get Out or some stylistic choices that maybe were not for the best in your opinion? Uh, Get Out was so... I want to say it was as based in reality as you can get. Mm. Um, More so than Nope and this one. I think I liked that the most about it. I also think maybe Get Out honestly just caught me so off guard by being a 10 Mm -hmm. that uh, it holds a special place. Maybe it's on a pedestal for me. And again, sorry to play comparisons here, but perhaps that's what's happening. No, that's fair. But there's a a lot of different beats in this movie that I can talk about when we get into spoiler mode after Zach's gone. But yeah, I'm very, very conflicted to say the least. Fair. Fair. Um, All right, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you ended with what you just said about based on reality Uh, because it goes into something that before I touch on like my exact thoughts something that I think is very important um, and something that I totally like understood during my first viewing I I thought I saw this many times but I don't remember watching it a second time so I'm just going to say this is my second time Um, and I remember I remember being blown away the first time um, and literally was like yeah this honestly could be better and get out because I did think this was much more of a horror movie um has like a little bit of a slasher elements tones down on some of the comedy um then get out uh which i definitely liked a lot more um but then now watching the second time definitely did not enjoy it as much as my first viewing um and this is what i was just started off with what dennis was saying ending it with the reality part so like and this is extremely subjective but i feel like as an audience member going into this like you need to know that it's like this movie I mean, it calls for extreme suspension of disbelief. Like, so when Dennis said based on reality, like, yes, like get out, everything in that movie not only could totally happen, but does happen. I mean, it's a whole message on racism and stuff, but like it is based on reality. Not everything. Huh? Not everything. Well, 
they take one sci-fi bit yeah. and then make it around reality. Just yeah. like no, Nope is the same thing. Nope is based on reality, but then has an extraterrestrial involved um, of some kind without spoiling that. And then with Us, Us just goes off the fucking rail. So Us is more about the message than Get Out, or, or not that more than Get Out, but I'm, I'm trying to explain this. Let me alley you here. It's more of an indirect metaphor rather than yes, a direct thank you. Like, parallel. Thank you, yes. Like... Rather than a direct commentary, huh? Right. Or, or, yeah, huh? I like it. Like if you go into this movie and like you try and take it like verbatim, like as is, um, and like try to like overthink the plot, like there's gonna be plot holes out the wazoo. Like it's insane. Like the, mm. it doesn't really make sense. Like nothing lines up. It's not cohesive. And that's kind of my first problem with the movie is I guess I wanted something more based on reality, more believable. Whereas this movie, it's more about the message and what it's trying to tell you. Uh, and portray to you about America, and we'll get into that here soon. Um, but I wanted to start off by saying that because I feel like it's very important. Because I think the first movie, I was just blown away because it kind of there's a there's a huge twist in the movie. Um, it's very thematic, and you you got to think a lot of, a, a lot about some stuff, which I thought was cool. But I still thought that it was like kind of realistic, and I like the way that they kind of uh, tied off the knot at the end of the movie or whatever. But my second viewing, I was like, oh, this is kind of bullshit. Like a lot of it. And I, and I thought it took itself a little too seriously. There's a lot of parts in this movie that, again, if you don't, you know, suspend like your belief of what's going on, like there's so many parts where you can, I could see somebody laughing out loud. Like it's kind of silly. Um, so, but with all that negativity to start off, I still generally do like this movie. Just like Dennis said, has all the same Jordan Peele stuff. It has, uh, has like its humor in it, um, but still has this like dark, eerie atmosphere to it, uh, which I appreciate and love. Like Matt said, the acting is fantastic. Lupita, like he's is just this is my favorite um, film of her easily. Um, and the kid actors I thought did a great job. And and also like Dennis said, it's extremely entertaining. It's like whatever problems I have with it, from start to finish. And it's a short movie, under two hours. We hit that sweet spot, um, and it was perfect for that. Um, and yeah, that's all I have to say without going to spoilers because there's a lot of crazy stuff to talk about. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Not as good as Get Out. Um, not that big a fan of a note of nope based on one viewing. I'm very excited to see that one again. But anyways, I'll start it off with a 7.5. Damn, you took a honking shit on that one to give it a 7.5. Well, <laughs> anything positive is going to come out of spoilers, so. Okay. I right. wanted the audience to, yeah, the audience to be aware that if you take this movie literally, you might hate it. Also the the Rotten Tomato score is like 93 and the audience score is 60, and I think that's very telling and relevant. Cuz it, ma- it makes a lot of sense to me. Why that is, but anyways, hmm. I'm just my my gears are turning over here. Um, well, I mean, to your point about like the message and stuff. Well, you, spoilers, anyone? Yeah, absolutely, spoilers. Um, to your point about the message, I think it's like the message is there, but it's not. You don't have to go like digging for it, per se. No, it's very Do apparent. The message is apparent. Yeah. So <sighs> it's like. When you say that a lot of the heavy lifting of this film or like the point of the film is the message, I feel like that that is disappointing because it's like the journey to get there was far too long to tell it's just this message. You know what I mean? Like if the journey itself didn't do it for you per se. I came from a totally different angle where I didn't really walk away with a message at all. I didn't understand what it was trying to say. I wasn't expecting that one. And maybe I just Did you missed think a it? whole bunch of clues along the way as well. That there was, like, there was a review I watched after this that had mentioned like two or three things that I just did not catch whatsoever. Did you like ruminate in it or what's the word? I'm I've been marinating, marinating in it all day. And I think a lot of recency bias kind of wore off. Can I read a quick quip from Jordan Peele about what the movie is? So we're all on the same page. Yeah, but I just want to get get clear on one thing with Dennis. So, like, because I feel like I wouldn't walk away from this film, well, maybe not as much on this movie as other movies, but I feel like I could easily just watch a movie and be like, okay, take it at face value and, like, move on. But if I think about it, then it'll come, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, true. Like, I'm trying to assign value to things that maybe I wouldn't have assigned Mm -hmm. value to before. So I basically was just asking if that's if you had done that exercise, per se. I tried. I tried. I kind of sat dumbfounded for a couple minutes trying to think about what what was I trying to be told. Okay, fair. All right. All right. Go ahead with your little... Uh, So, yeah, this was Jordan Peele's uh, interpretation of the movie or what he was trying to uh, portray. 
Uh, in the broader strokes of things, this movie is about this country. And then I decided to write this movie. I was stricken by the fact that we we're in a time where we fear the other. Whether, whether it is the mysterious invader that we think is going to come kill us and take our jobs, or the faction that we don't live near that voted in a different way than us. And we're all about pointing the finger. And I wanted to suggest that maybe the monster we really need to look at has our face. Maybe the evil is us. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like, like that mixed with, I think it's also has a broad message about just like higher class versus lower class and suppressing the lower class and using them to help uh, pedestal up the higher class, which I, that part at least is very apparent to me, maybe a little overdone in the movie. Um, but for to his point, I love that. Uh, like, I don't, I don't really take all of that out of my first viewing. I remember, but then definitely boosted my second viewing just like, yeah, like humans just like hate each other basically. And it's like, constant conflict no matter what the subject matter is whether it's political or race or just having road rage and traffic like we all kind of just hate each other in a way which i don't know is very disappointing and i'm glad that there's a movie out there now that kind of goes at that and then to tie this back into my sort of negative part about the movie is that i wish he would have done that in a way that wasn't so sci-fi-esque and like kind of crazy and disbelievable about the whole thing. And this is where we can actually explain to the audience what the movie is. So usually you're good at that. If you want to talk about the the tethered people. I could do or my Matt best. Can. I mean, I can yeah. take it if you want. Whoever can. So basically like we have real life people who exist. In the overworld. Who exist as we do. Oh, sorry for wow. your ears. Uh, <laughs> Um, who exist as we do in reality. And then you have a second group of people who are exact copies of us that live underground in all the abandoned tunnels, miles and miles of abandoned tunnels um, that were made aware of at the beginning of the film with some text. Um, but basically these undergrounders are literal clones of uh, us above grounders that were made by the government in an experiment to control the population, um, where basically the clones would act out what they wanted us to do, and then we would do it. And we basically have this, we're tethered to them, um, or that's the theory, and yeah. So uh, Free the, will suppression. Yeah, so on so, the overworld, everybody's free to interact with their environments and each other in a way that makes them happy, whereas below ground in the tunnels, none of these externalities exist it's just people in a system of tunnels. So like they make a really good exposition of a group of people on a roller coaster. You know, they're strapped in, they're waving their hands around, going up and down the hills, having a good time. Whereas their parallels or tethers underground are stood in two single file lines right next to each other, kind of just seizing about as if they were going through the motions without experiencing any of the actual fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to Dennis's point, like basically this experiment went bad and it didn't have the effect where like the basically the body and the soul were separate and the government couldn't figure out how to clone the soul. Uh which is a long way to say experiment failed, bunch of bodies underground. But nothing to do with we don't feel yeah. like dealing with them. So yeah, they just live under there. <clears throat> um which that your little sentence just there completely explains the theme. Because that's how mm. Wait, do it again because I missed that too. What the hell? Do it they, again. They just they just live under there. They just no, it's just there. like the theme of like higher class versus lower class. Like, yeah, so like oh. the idea that basically one group, you know, privilege, a big part of privilege is that someone else has to be below you to be privileged, right? Like privilege is relative to other people. So in order for us as white males to be, you know, pushed up on a pedestal, some other uh, race or gender has to be pushed down, basically, right? Like to establish the hierarchical order. Um and so that's kind of what's described here. And you have the references to, um, not just references, like kind of central to the plot, the whole uh, hands across America, holding hands. Uh, that was an effort in the 80s to raise money for homelessness. And so, you know, like homeless people, obviously, it's just, there's a lot of direct ties, like Zach was saying, with the homelessness or like the classism. But then on a broader scale, looking at ourselves in the mirror and being like, we're all literally the same like genetic makeup it's just about how we were raised and like these hateful messages that you hear that drive us against each other and things like that um not to mention that the movie is literally titled u.s there's so many things in that yeah, yeah. so god he's so smart he is 
Uh, I know movies. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. That Was that enough synopsis for No, me? that was perfect. I had it right on the head. I didn't get a whiff of like classism or like class warfare from anything that was portrayed in the movie. I guess maybe I kind of did at the end when the alter ego or the parallel of our main character. Her name's Red in the Red, movie, right? Yeah. All right, so the version of Lupita Nyong'o that has lived her whole life underground with these... Uh, tethers she gives us the exposition and kind of makes a point that you know to no fault of anyone's own she was the she was the one that was forced to be underground whereas an exact copy of her got to have this completely different life that was full of joy happiness and feelings of euphoria whereas she never got any of that which to no fault of her own either like no one in either of these spots was at fault for the other it's just how it happened you know, someone naturally got to enjoy a fruitful life, whereas someone, I guess, naturally didn't get to enjoy that life. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I mean, that's a, another point. It's like you have, there's some level of being intentional about where you sit with things or like how you're, you know, like engaging in charitable efforts and like things like that. Obviously you can, like, you can't, there's nothing wrong with being like born into a rich family or something, mm-hmm. but it's recognizing that you have been born into a situation or a position of privilege and doing what you can to bring other people up. Uh, um, I also wanted to say, cause it goes directly to my point. Dennis said he didn't really get a whiff of any of that classism or themes that were really apparent to him during his viewing. And like, that's exactly why I wanted to preface my opening with that. Cause I feel like if you didn't get any of that and you're just taking this movie at face value for what's happening in the movie, and you're not reading into it, not that you have to, or like it takes a smart person to do that, but like some people just like, like in Dennis's case, he didn't. I feel like that completely takes away the movie and taints it. So like, I'm surprised you even give it a five if that's the point. Because like to me, it's like my scale is heavily weighted by those, by catching that stuff, I guess. And if I didn't catch that, I feel like I'd be giving this movie like a four or something like that. So I feel like that's why I wanted to say it's like, you cannot take this movie at face value and if you want to subjectively have a good time. Like, yeah. it, like it's like the message is so powerful and weighted here. And I think Jordan Peele did that on purpose, whether subjectively you think that's good or wrong or good or bad. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, to your point, Dennis, about like some of it maybe going over your head or just you not catching it. I feel like that's easy to do. Like you have to be intentional about like mm-hmm. setting out to do that stuff. And I think after the first viewing, I probably didn't pick up on it as much. And, and I'm not going to sit here and take credit for like every single thing that I picked up on it this time. Like I'll go online and be like, ending explained like yeah i understood the ending but i know there's a bunch of other stuff in there that's exactly. sprinkled about that i don't have a good grasp on um but also i think it's important to consider those things and you're saying like it's weighted here or you can see why people would rate it lower if they didn't know of those things i would say that that uh, it's not like a bad thing to do but at the same time it's like you can't really rate the movie or like give a, a well-rounded opinion on the movie if you don't know, like, the intentions behind it or, like, you're, like, reading half the story, so to speak, and then being like, oh, I didn't like it. And I'm not saying saying that towards you. I'm just saying in general from, like, a movie perspective, you got to kind of understand what the what the point is to be able yeah. to judge it, I guess. And then we can jump into, like, going off of that, like how if you don't, or I guess it, it doesn't necessarily have to be if you didn't really catch on any of the themes or... Uh, broader strokes Jordan Peele was trying to like get you to think about and contemplate while watching this but if you don't I would I would just think this movie is silly and this is kind of my problem with the movie because I want both the best worlds I want a believable like awesome I don't know just intricate detailed story or whatever that's like realistic and believable grounded that also has the message where this movie I love kind of sci-fi elements I love like it's not like the idea the tether to me is dumb but it's just like it's so unbelievable like, if, if the government actually clones some people, you're all living in the sewers, they're not going to last more than, like, I don't know, how, however many months. They're literally eating and living off of eating white bunny rabbits. Where are those bunny rabbits coming from? Like, the whole, I, I now read online, Jordan Peele, the whole reason he incorporated bunny rabbits because out of all the animals, they're the ones that breed the most or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, it gives, it gives that theory, like, a little bit more grounding. But so, at the end of the day, it's not believable at all. Um... There's a lot of fucking plot, to, like plot holes, just in the idea of accepting this as a premise of this movie. That if you just begin to think about it, it completely falls apart. Like the entire structure of the point of the movie falls apart. 
and that is where like my problem lies. Do you it's, think it's it's plot holes or it's just like the the like out there nature of it or like unbelievable nature of the concept itself? Because like I I didn't come I didn't come across like any pot, plot holes myself. No, no, what you just said is accurate. It's okay. like there's not necessarily plot holes that or as an actual hole in the story that makes the plot not work. Right. So I guess I literally just said it word for word, not a plot hole. Um, but what you said, it's more just the concept is so unbelievable that it just takes me out. Um, and it took yeah. me out in my second viewing more than my first, which is why I didn't love it as much this time. Yeah. But again, that goes like knowing the themes though and knowing like what he was going after, I can forgive it. And like like the first time I watched this movie, I didn't get half of it. I think I understood a good portion, but I didn't get all of it. Now, after understanding it more, knowing what would happen and catching on more, I like those elements better. But I just feel like it would work better if it was not such a disbelievable mm. plot. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I can see that. It doesn't personally bother me in this, but yeah. Well, it's good. It bothered me in other movies, so. Daddy boy, you're quite quiet over there. Are you absorbing? Yeah, I am. I think, I don't think, uh, perhaps it's my own fault, but I per- I knew JP, the main man, the big homie, <laughs> is a master at you know, doing things intentionally and maybe I was looking for them too hard in places where they weren't to be found mm-hmm. uh, because I didn't have, I didn't know what this movie was going to be about going in really. And I had no context to what is going to happen or what ideas were going to be explored. I might've been looking for his get out or nope type intentions, you know, in places where they just didn't exist in this movie. And so perhaps they whizzed past me as I was misdirected. That's fair. Just like less on the nose, is that kind of what you're saying? Or yeah, yeah. Get actually. out couldn't have been more on the nose, yeah. and it's yeah. like so easy. To, like anybody couldn't understand that. I wasn't this calibrated. Is this, yeah. is, this is a I different get that. beast. No, that's fair. Yeah, and maybe that's part of the reason my first viewing was not great. For like, you just have the expectation, not only from a oh this is going to be so good, or you know it's going to do a lot of the things that Get Out did well or whatever, but it's just like expectations on the micro level like you're saying like how will mm-hmm. the issues be addressed in this and whatever else so and that's why i think that rotten tomato score is literally perfect like it just shows that's exactly what is happening like by viewers because like everybody's like split on it like they don't some people are like dennis some mm-hmm. people kind of got it more at first but like it's just i like that it's split i'm surprised that your second viewing wasn't better to be honest <sighs> the more it's better and worse in different ways. And I can't pick which one I want to pick. Like, I don't, I don't know if I want to say mm-hmm. it was better or worse. I, I, I was mixed feelings on the second viewing, which I wasn't expecting. Shit. Okay. Um, do you have something? I got a ton of things, but they mm. don't really follow right now. Yeah. Um, well, we don't have anything that we're talking about, so throw it on in there. Okay. I don't know if this is my style, my own preference, but I thought it was very clear that the direction and acting of this movie was pretty good the directing for sure but i don't think the script was necessarily up to par with something like nope or get out where everybody on screen seems real and natural maybe the big standout in this movie is gabe the dad yeah he's like a dorky dad but i'm gonna throw this back to our napoleon episode with favorite guest friend andy they don't pass the dialogue test where in which in order to be good dialogue he cannot see the script he cannot imagine Mm. word for word what it says or like the uh, acting directions written in the script as well and i got a lot of that from particularly the dad and the uh the main family as a whole no i totally he's he's the epitome of a jordan peele character in a movie that's all i could put it i I would even say as great as get out is they're all caricatures mm, you of know each what? other. You know what? Yeah. So you know... Nope uh, is the same one. You know the role Lil Rel Howery plays in Get Out? Oh, is that the friend? friend? Rob? That's what I was going to yeah. compare him to. So yeah, thank every, you. Yeah. Everybody in this movie kind of not behaves like, but emits vibes uh, friend Rob from Get Out. Yeah, like they're... Except Rod. Lupita. Rod. Like they take their... Ex- except for Lupita. She's like a normal mom and has her you know issues that they get into. It's, a very, it's more serious. Whereas like... Yeah, the dad in this one, uh, Rob and Get Out, and I would say the entire white family of Get Out. It's like they all have their spe- specific personality trait. Okay, and us, the dad, he's he's a dorky dad. He's like fun, loving with the kids, and then it just go like it's just like take that to level one hundred. It's like what Peel does. 
yeah, which it, which is funny and it works at, from an entertaining standpoint. Yeah. But from a, like you said, a script standpoint, like, eh, is it realistic? Does it work? But for me, I, I love that in Jordan Peele movies, and I expect that, and I want that. So that's why in this case, I don't have an issue with it. But I totally agree with what you're saying. No, I didn't think anybody was um, like a character caricature of anything. I just thought it was just less convincing of a, a portrayal of those characters. Maybe that's what he went for. But if he did then maybe he's a little too artiste for my taste as well. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't really have it. I feel like I didn't really have a problem with it, but, I mean, you got to, like, I don't know. It's not definitely not winning any script, you oh. know, script writing <laughs> awards or anything yeah. like that. But I think it works, and this is kind of, like, bullshit a little bit, I feel like, but I'm wondering if having a, like, really outstanding script from a dialogue perspective would have even done much for this i think it would have made it worse that's what i sure. think like yeah. is it makes it like i don't know because in the I, movie i do i don't know how to explain it yeah, but it sounds like, insane no because then it go because then it goes into kind of the point i was making about some of my issues with the movie then the movie is taking itself way too seriously for what it is which yeah. will make some of those silly elements that i brought up that might not be silly to somebody way more apparent and way more jarring thank okay. you okay. so it's if like, you have this sil- like this brilliant it's like scorsese or nolan-esque written script di- or i actually should say in this case like tarantino or uh well, scorsese is a good one just great dialogue perfect script and then you have this weird fucking jarring plot about tethered pe- shadow people living underneath you coming up rising up it's like like you got to have some sense of levity and humor and the Jordan Peele characters that I think are perfect for the script. Yeah. That was like the, that's what I was going to say is like, it's if, as if, it's is. It is as the if. The podcast is canceled. Um, <laughs> it's as if the, you read a comic book and it's like the best dialogue you ever read. Like it just doesn't make sense for it to be there. Right. And like it, it, it contrasts in a negative way to the <sighs> rest of what's going on. We'll see with Get Out. All that perfect dialogue felt like it needed to be there, or it felt perfectly in place there. And I think, to contrast what Zach just said a second ago, I think I would have liked this a whole lot more if we got more of that in this, because I would have still liked, you know, the amount of humor that was in this if it was just delivered in the same way that kind of a, I I think Bradley, not Bradley Lawrence, whatever white haired dad is in Get Out, he's funny. I think, I think. It's kind of crazy, and maybe it's just my own personal preference to say that if the script was a 10 out of 10, this movie would be worse. Do you think that well, that to, has anything to do with the fact that you took maybe more of a face value or got more of a face value out of this? Like, if you have, like, you know, four things that the movie does well, and the underlying message is maybe one that didn't come across to you as, as much, I can see that it would feel like it's lacking in, like, maybe something that dialogue could fix. To get your, your get you your four parts. This is like such a stupid. No, analogy, no, no. I think I'm kind of following. It's just like, do you feel like you were craving more because you didn't have some of the underlying themes or messaging coming across as he might have hoped? Yeah, probably. It's probably okay, fair to say that. And I also, that some of the directions that it went, I just kind of wish it didn't. Like it, we go from probably one of the most horrifying, intense first acts that I've seen in probably the history of this show that we do and then you kind of pivot that away and it becomes more so like a uh, like a comedy horror in the second act and then we kind of take a third that. second pivot third act into uh you know a sci-fi kind of thriller genre which i was also kind of there for but it didn't hit it did not get out of the park on the ending it didn't stick the landing i guess see i i kind of agree with what you're saying but one thing, like, I Get Out is, like, literally, like, con- like this movie is not a horror comedy. It's not listed as such, whereas Get Out is. Like, Get Out is fucking hilarious. Like, Get Out's dialogue is, like, insanely funny. Like, that is such a funny movie. Whether, like, it's supposed to be funny for the message that Jordan Peele is going for, or... Oh, I don't know. Not. Like, this movie, like, when it was funny, it was, like, yeah, a little bit thrown in. But Get Out was significantly more funny. And the idea that Get Out had this like 10 out of 10 script in terms of just speaking of the dialogue, I don't believe that. I'd say it's exactly the same as this movie. I do agree that Get Out was funnier, and I think that the reason for that was because they're trying to... Kind of parody? Like, well, not as much parody as as it is just like keep the mood light to be delivering a a slap in the face message that it was like in a very Mm -hmm. direct way. And some parody, but yeah. And then in this, it's like more of a traditional 
horror movie and like there's in all horror movies there's fucking jokes like unless it's like hereditary yeah. or like some like the whatever witch. um but like your average you know blockbuster like halloween whatever standard horror movie you have jokes and and kind of brings levity to the situation right so i think that that's the road that this took yeah i didn't like i didn't like that it took that okay that's fair that's a subjective yeah point. i i agree with that i would, since this was like I think it was marketed as like just a straight horror movie from Jordan Peele. I was really excited. And we get some of that. But yeah, I agree. I wish there was like no humor, if we're going to be honest. Uh, it would have worked better because, and we can kind of transition to this. I want to talk about some of the horror elements. Uh, I didn't really get much out of the initial home invasion of, um, you know, our main cast. Um, I was going to say Lupita's family. I can't even think of the character's name in the movie. Um that one know. wasn't that scary to me. It was like, I don't know, kind of goofy to me with the way the little kids running on all fours with the mask on and I don't know. But when the white family, when they come in, so when their tether people come in, it starts with them like the two twins are sitting, two teenage girls, twins are sitting at the top of the uh, stairway, their parents are looking up and then the girl just slits her fucking throat open. I'm like, I'm all in. Like that, the way that was filmed was like, I remember seeing that in theaters like and that scene stuck with me. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those scenes that is like, you weren't expecting that. It's yeah. like a shock mm-hmm. value mixed with like, that's fucking brutal. And then like that entire scene is like, when I think of us, I think of that scene. And that's just such, it's like so well done. It makes me want a full on slasher Jordan Peele movie that's just dead serious. Not one joke, super dark and brutal. And then I wanted more of that. And to Dennis's point, I agree with him. After that badass scene, it kind of gets goofy. Literally within minutes, the family, the uh, the main character's family comes into the white people's house. They're sitting in the living room and they're like cracking jokes as the yeah. entire world is going to apocalypse. I'm like, eh, that's a little too silly for me. Uh-huh. I did feel that at that specific scene uh, when they're sitting in the living room at the other family's house. Um, it just like flips a switch and becomes yeah, it is a that little very gripping to uh, somebody trying to voice command a home assistant that starts playing fucking police, that which is funny. which is actually hilarious. I mean, I thought that was <sighs> it is it is funny. It was a huge Not eye to mention roll. the fact that their the name was Ophelia. Yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, what's no, the significance see, of Ophelia? It's just like a fucking terrible name that no one would ever name a home assistant. Yeah, it oh, sounds okay. like a freaking yeah whatever. No one would name their kid that. It's just an ugly name. Kind of no offense, Ophelias out there, um, oh. but wanting a straight horror slasher film from Jordan Peele. I think that's a high hope scenario. You have to you have to think nope, about this. Nope was kind of close. It took it took out a lot of humor. I haven't seen that recently enough to speak on that point, but I feel like I mean he's coming from a comedy, from doing comedy for years and years and years. And I know, and then he went into the horror genre on purpose. Right, but also like horror like we said is written with corny comedy. Corny one-liners that come know, but at it like, seemingly have the to. wrong time. Right, but I feel like this fits more in that lane than it does a hereditary lane. Like it would be having an identity crisis if it landed somewhere. Oh, in I'm not talking about this script or us, like the movie specifically. I just mean like, based on what Jordan showed me, he was the potential oh. of doing. I would want, I want to see based more of that. Based on the trailer, is that what you're saying, or the marketing? I was no, based on the movie. No, based on the movie, like like the, the oh. scene I talked about that I love oh. so much. I'm like, he he's shown the capability to be one of one of the best horror actor or directors, which he already has. I mean, he's already supplanted himself as one of my favorite horror directors. I mean, he produced The Candyman. There's not one joke in that movie. That's an amazing horror movie. Um, and he helped write that as well. Uh, he's great in the horror genre. So just because he came from comedy doesn't mean he's got to have jokes in all his horror movies going forward. His next movie, the uh, uh, last thing I read was like, it's kind of a straight horror movie. Oh, there to, you go. To not expect for much comedy. Unknot your panties and put them back on. And let's well, on. I was just saying the potential within this film, like Dennis said, it kind of just switched gears, which yeah, is a, sl- mean, is a small negative. It's not a big it wasn't meant deal to be breaker that. for me. It wasn't meant to be it. Sorry. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Dennis? <laughs> I just keep looking over at his phone. He has a lot of words written down. Yeah. When, with a movie like Get Out and Nope, it very much tells one singular story the entire time and it's cohesive and the tone and mood is very similar until you get to kind of the uh, the climax in which it kind of shifts gears with a reveal and then you get the, you know, the resolution and stuff. I really like that formula. I'm not quite sure, so sure how much, how much I can enjoy a movie that, you know, 
fish hooks into my skin immediately, draws me in, and has me drooling. Drooling is maybe a weird word here. I was like genuinely kind of horrified at the opening, wow. like thirty minutes of this movie. Nice, the whole first act, pretty much. Uh, but then it totally surrendered all that. You know, in lo- it surrendered all that to pursue, you know, cheesy, haha, funny horror, which is fine for people that like that. But it just didn't work for me. But then uh, maybe I was going to come right back because in this third act, when you have th- these underground tethers created by some secret society or whomever, you know, it's, a, it's it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's another you that shares your same soul. And it's, you know, it's pretty much an underground puppet that has to do all the same movements as you without any of the, uh, the livelihood or things that make you, you, that was interesting to me, but oh. I don't quite understand where or what the motive was for any of these people to, you know, want to just come outside and then hold hands I didn't understand what it was trying to get at there. You know, it kind of just seemed like, oh, there's these this group of people, this super sweet concept, but there's nothing really that exciting about it besides it existing. Mm. Well, that, that's, I mean, I don't totally disagree with that. I think the whole premise was like the, you know, when we find out that original, well, Red. Well, Red this is, was the whole twist Red of the movie. Is, right, so Red, Red, so like... When little Lupita wanders into the house and gets swapped, that's what we find out at the very end of the movie, that really the tether was coming up and living a normal life for all these years. While uh, original Lupita, who is red in this movie, is underground, and she's basically trying to create like an uprising where everyone's coming out and acknowledging, or like saying, we're here. She was, like, she was like a god figure. Yeah. Because sure. nobody down there knew like... Could speak. Could sp- well, yeah, like all they know is what they were doing. They're literally tethered. They're the shadow to the person above. So when they saw this, this one person now that actually has free will, kind of, and like she's shown the ability to have free will, they're like, "Holy fuck!" Like this is crazy, and that's why they respond to her wanting to have an uprising to go and take over. In the whole, I mean, I do agree that like it's kind of all for nothing, or like what's the point? Because they just come up in their their whole thing about holding hands across America is to announce their arrival of like, we're here now and like a demonstration kind of thing. And they're going to proceed to kill their copies. That's, I mean, that's pretty apparent. Right. At least, least well, in the initial, so much of this stuff just doesn't register for me. Well, in the, in the beginning, they're killing their copies. That registered for you. I don't think that their long-term goal is to kill their copies. I think their long-term goal is to live amongst everyone else, but they had to come up and present themselves as a danger or like, I mean, how? What are you just gonna come out of the ground and be like, "Hey, uh, you just have to get the, with the fact that I'm a direct copy of her, and we're just gonna be hanging out." Like you gotta, like they were coming up and trying to make a statement, and also they've been suppressed for their whole lives, so they want some form of revenge. No, I don't blame them. No, I want them to kill. Everybody. I love the tethered. I want them to kill everybody above ground. The whole earth should be filled with tethered. All right, are you tethered? No. This movie ends the exact same way that Knock at the Cabin ends. What? With some sort of kumbaya, like, they were right moment, or the earth is changing, there's a there's a new ruling population or something like that, and you don't really get any, I didn't get any satisfaction out of what happens or what ended. There's I didn't no, get any satisfaction out of the ending, either of them all holding hands, but I got satisfaction of the twist. Like I got satisfaction out of the holding hands, because it's more of representing of they've arrived. Well, yeah, but it's like I can see what he's saying is it's not very like holy. Sh- it didn't give me the holy shit moment. That's but I would I I would be remiss to compare it to Knock at the Cabin. Knock at the Cabin, well, literally the entire movie was for nothing. Is what happened at the end. Well, that's kind nothing of, meant anything. We just watched a, a waste of two hours. Well, Agreed. I feel like it's super super similar here because you've got not only physically, you know, the family members riding off into the sunset of this changed world because of some supernatural force or some unexplained phenomenon that is now their reality it just doesn't give you any like there's no wonder of oh my gosh what's going to happen next it's kind of just them swallowing the pill in one gulp and being over it do you remember that at knock of the cabin where the one of the husbands dies and then it's just dad and dad and little don't watch that movie just run off into the sunset in their car because 
well, this is how the world is. The uh, the crazy people were right, and actually the world was kind of ending, but we saved it, so it's not. So even though however many people died in that movie are okay. dead. I exactly. See the, I see I live on what you're trying to draw, but I, I did not at all experience or like put this in the same bucket as... I think you're just thinking like they're both in cars and there's sunset at the end, and you're just un- <laughs> underwhelmed, and you're like, fuck this. Well, it ends on this like ominous like picture of you know the tethered holding hands across america literally while there's like smoke and uh fires in the background and helicopters a beat beat song yeah and it's yeah it's just like yeah like the tethered like they rose like they won that's like they started the movie uh suppressed and now they're ending the movie their movement worked and they've now announced themselves they'd killed probably 50 percent of their copies like they're taking over now whereas knock at the cabin the movie started with some a, some a small group of people uh, the four horsemen uh, yeah. were complaining an apocalypse. Apocalypse almost happened. It didn't. And then the world continues. Like literally nothing happened. The beginning is the same as the end. Where this movie, like we a lot of shit happened and then it it worked. But but I'm, I'm still left with the, the the notion of, okay, now now what? And why why does I mean, it matter? That's a, I'm, that's, you're not wrong for feeling that way. I mean... I just... I just hate when things are compared to Knock at the Cabin. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I just got I got irked and raged. Well, you cannot deny Knock the parallels the... are certainly there. I'll deny them internally. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'd be remiss to not talk about how this movie trailer was like one of the sickest trailers I've ever seen with that song. That's like, yeah. what's what's the song? What's oh, that I song? got five on it. I got it. five on it. Is that the name of the song? Sure. Whatever. Maybe. Everyone knows that song. I got five on it. Yeah. And there's just like this horror like mix that it's they do. It's such a badass That theme. is so insane. It was in the trailer. And honestly, if you haven't seen the movie, or if you have, just go watch the trailer right now because it's so If that can carry, if a song can carry a movie, this one, this movie did it. And Dude. then even the climax when uh, Red and Adelaide. Yeah. Adelaide are fighting. Like, even though like, I don't know, the the choreography mixed with that even though um, it's like beyond its belief and I'm like kind of checked out kind of just by the thought of what's happening is happening, it's still such a badass scene or a badass five minutes of that, that kind of fight scene, which was so cool. Um, you leave, you kind of leave the movie with that taste in your mouth too, which I liked. Um, but yeah, like the music in this movie is just like insane. And then the opening scene where we're staring at the rabbit who was giving Black Phillip his fuck with a yeah. side eye for like the entire opening credits. It's just like one zoom like zooming out slowly zooming out shot of this rabbit in this cage um and it's playing whatever that song that was is. directly from get out too so such a get out vibe. fucking good dude yeah. like i was vibing during that scene and it was just like you know a lot of having being forced to watch opening credits is like fucking terrible sometimes and jordan peele's style is literally unprecedented like it's insane i just like want more but at the same time i he's like a director like i want him to only make like five movies because, like, I don't want it to be oversaturated at any point. Mm-hmm. He's just so good at what he does, but, like, I don't want too much of it. Well, good it's luck, because he's averaging, like, every two years minus the pandemic. Well, his new movie just got delayed by a long time. It's supposed to come out this year, the end of this year. Well, writer's strike and the, whatnot. Hurt us all. Yeah. Uh, okay. He picked some good-ass songs for his, uh, his sequences. Oh, yeah. yeah. No denying that. Um... Yeah, I mean, nothing else is going to live up to get out. So I think everyone just needs to accept that at this point. I think something can. It's just because that movie, it's like kind of this movie. It's like how much is the message important to you? I think everybody can appreciate, respect, and like I think saying falling in love with the message is kind of a crazy way to put it. But for Get Out, it's like, you know, everybody's with that message. That movie came out. It was a phenomenon. I feel like it affected a lot of people in a lot of different ways, like emotionally and how you view the world, how you view race, you know, how you view our country. Um, and I think that is so powerful that like, I think that kind of gets, I don't want to say the movie's overrated. I think I gave it like a 9.8 or something. It's a great movie, but that definitely carries so much weight for the movie. Whereas this movie, you know, you might have been more entertained in terms of like mm. the horror and stuff or comedy or whatever you want to uh, pick from it. The message in this movie may not be as important to somebody. I mean, I'll admit it. Like, yeah, the the message in Get Out, I think is way more important in our society as we speak right now than us. I'm it's not, the same message. Just repackaged. Well, if you put it that way, then I don't like this then. If you just do Dennis the says same, no. I don't think Elaborate. I don't think it is. No, you said you, this this to you is the same message as get out? Yeah. Because it's literally saying that I mean 
the core of the message is the same. Obviously, like, it's not the same exact thing, but it's like, this group of people has a different experience because... He just took grace out people of it. Is, is, are privileged. I mean, it's... this. A, what happens in us can apply to any segmented group of people or like people on the opposite side of the spectrum. Race, class, gender, whatever we want to talk about. Poli- like political views. In Get Out, it's it's hyper-focused on, you know, the black experience. So it's just broadening the message and saying, like, whatever. Who are we no, to, like... I agree with I that. I don't think it's it's much different. I mean, he's obviously... I mean, he's a black man. He's good, he, and he very much cares about the social context or like the social um weight of his movies and so he's fighting the good fight and trying to deliver the message for the people that he has a platform to be able to deliver that message damn i have to i agree i have to mentally separate the message of this one from get out like i think zach said it's about you know the fear of the other you know, even though, you know, it could be, you know, the people that are coming to take your job or the people that voted on the other side of the new, that they're the enemy versus, you know, the actual enemy could probably be internalized. I think mm. Get Out was definitely less metaphorical and less about. Mm, yeah. Yeah, uh, no, that's fair. Others, whatever. It is a uh, Venn diagram of sorts to some degree. Sure, sure. Some overlap. I most definitely heard that 100%. Copy, copy. Roger. Do you want to join in the middle, the overlapping part and hang out? No, all right. Fuck you. There's so many cool little tidbits like that. He like you just said it. Like it's about like the divide of our country specifically, and like why the fuck are Republicans and liberals fighting each other? Why can't we just like come why can't together? We fight terrorists. I mean, yeah. But like this, like I don't know, little elements with like the scissors. Like that's obviously used for like you said earlier. Like Jordan Peele's very intentional. He does everything for a reason. <laughs> the scissors is a perfect parallel, and like it's literally a perfect divide left and right. Um, oh, we're going that far. Ooh, that's no, no, like uh, I could go. I go for an hour. Let's on go that even kind of stuff further. Can I? I saw this one. Like, oh, it's like a fucking live, laugh, love ass quote. It's like the scissors are representative of how two sides come together with one purpose to divide. It did not say that. No, it so did. I, I don't know. This wasn't Jordan Peele or anything, but like this is how <laughs> Jordan some, Peele himself. This is how Reddit Redditor number yeah. six three nine said it's it's two equal sides coming together with one common purpose to divide something. Brain explodes. Yeah, I mean, sense. like, I'm whatever. If you get some deep. shit from a movie, then whatever. Like, that's the point of art. Well, I'm just saying, this movie you know. is just filled with that kind of shit. Like, more than you you would even want to see in one scene at a particular time. Which I I love that kind right, of stuff. What other stuff do you? Have? I love layers. Give it another couple examples that you want to give. I wasn't planning on speaking that on the podcast today, but if Dennis wanted to pull it up, he could. In the meantime, here's my rendition of. I got five on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of that Jordan Sparks song. No air. No yeah. air. Fuck. Chris Brown. That's Chris Brown's song. Tell me how I'm supposed to breathe in the wind. That was supposed to be a joke. I don't know the lyrics. Did you guys pull anything out of how the dads in the two families that we kind of focus on are nonverbal? And is there really any reason as to why? The only reason, yes. The only reason that Red is verbal and can, none of the tethered can speak. I don't think he's talking about the tethered. Oh, no, I actually was talking no, about the tethered. Was. Oh, Dennis, freaking what the hell, man. Obviously, none of the tethered speak. And the only reason Red sounds like that isn't because she's been like, she, that, she girls know how to speak. She was only, she was like eight years old. She could speak just fine. Uh-huh. It's because when they switched, she choked her out. Gotcha. And heard her vocal cords. Oh, Another really? thing that just went completely over my head. You know, these people are living in a full-fledged, I'm going to, not full fledged, but somewhat of a society. You know, they've survived for it seems like generations. I'm made to believe, and they can't speak. I guess it makes sense, but you know, it's another thing that just could have used a little bit of more explanation. Okay, one big plot hole that I just since Matt asked me about plot actual holes plot hole, actual one that doesn't make any sense takes me takes me out of the movie. I remember doing it both viewings. So they're they're supposed to be like oh the people above ground and below ground are shadow people, so they they do your actions. This movie like to pick and choose when they can do the actions. <laughs> so the son walks backwards into fire, and then the copy does the same thing and kills himself. But they're not doing the exact actions at all during the entire movie. <laughs> it's like just picks and chooses when to do shit. I, think, I don't like that at all. I think all. they might have addressed some of that. Um, and was that a cop? Was that a like him being tethered is why he was copying him? I mean, I don't know. I was like, maybe didn't jump to that conclusion because no one else was doing that. I, yeah, I kind of saw it as that. Okay. Um, but like, I thought that about 
Lupita's characters because I was like, okay, well, wait. If they swapped places and they're tethered, then shouldn't above-ground Lupita be doing what below-ground Lupita is doing after they swap? And my but only, then they say that they became untethered at the time of the switch. My only... Oh. Uh, no, because then yeah. in, the ballet re- in the ballet scene, they're the only the reason that she was shit. able to do ballet well above-ground is because the actual ballet person was below-ground doing that. Plot hole alert. And then also, well, thinking about it, the only possible explanation you can give to that is, and this is getting way too deep into a very stupid concept already, <laughs> but all these clones, these clones, the shadow people, once they... The de- shadow people. But they, Zach's <laughs> fucking no, made up. No, stop. Movie. No, they literally referred to that in the movie. That's, that's why I keep saying that. <laughs> stop. Fact check. So Fact check. <laughs> uh, the above ground people, when they have kids, my only thing that I can explain this away in my own head is... When they have kids, those kids, I guess, because it's like not a direct clone, then they can act differently. So that would explain the son. But then why? Why would you like? I don't know. I can't. I can't even explain it. Wait, say that again. I'm saying because like uh, Red says to Lapita in the living room, they're talking about how, like, yeah, you you got to have these beautiful children, and like you gave birth oh, to them. Fucked up. And they explain like the C-section stuff, and she was like, they ripped mine out of my stomach. Like in a yep. harsh way. So obviously when they have kids above ground, then the tethered have kids the same way below ground, just in a most brutal way, obviously. So I'm like, my only explanation was like, okay, so the OG copies, so you could say parents at this point underground, literally do act out the exact same yeah. downstairs. But then when they have the kids, I guess the kids aren't direct copies because they were born from a tethered DNA, which I guess is the oh, same. So you're d- saying that they, that they don't act as the ones up top do? I'm saying that more autonomy. You could, yes, you can maybe make that argument. Well, then the kid copying Jason's hands exactly doesn't make any sense. Or him walking backwards into a fire. It doesn't, nothing is explained. Some of this stuff doesn't work. I really do like the concept, though, of when it's initially explained, you know, I'm a shadow version of you. Like whatever you choose to do just happens to me against my own Mm -hmm. uh, desire or whatever. That's cool. But it just doesn't like, you're not supposed to think about it. And that's as hard for me as a (laughs) thinking person, moviegoer. As a cranial gentleman. Literally. Handshake. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, that's annoying, but that's fine. So you guys know how uh, Red, the the shadow person of Lupita, talks like this. That kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Good job. She, um, that was good. She based that on Robert F. Kennedy's actual voice. You guys ever heard him talk? No. Oh, nope. I envy you so much. It's so rough. Like he talks like he's actively swallowing gravel. <laughs> it's it's crazy. I gotta look this up now. No, no, you are gonna be mind blown that this man was like in front of cameras for a large part of his life. I think he was a tethered. Give him a break, dude. Oh, that actually explains a lot. <gasps> Maybe. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Shall we wrap? Yes. It's late. Okay. Um, I'll go first. Um. I maybe liked the movie a little bit less today, but it came in here because <laughs> Zach was just pointing out plot holes that were originally not plot holes, but then suddenly they became plot holes, question mark. Uh, still beautifully acted. I enjoyed the experience. I had a good time. I was entertained. It did not waste time in getting to the entertainment. Mm, I did not have some of the same issues with the writing or dialogue that my compadres did, but I can understand. Uh, I feel like when I don't look at you're the you're so disappointed anymore, that like you don't. I'm re- oh, I, you wanted this one to go up, didn't you? <laughs> no, well, not necessarily, but I'm disappointed that this has been banished back in my mind to be somewhat equal to my first experience with the film. Well, don't let it do that. Well, it's, it's it, too late. You've already done it. You enjoyed You've this tethered way me. better the second time. Um. Without referencing, we might need to bring back score referencing because I don't know how to rate a movie that's not on a 0.5 scale anymore without the relation to everything else. Uh, this one's going to drop to 7.6. Cause not just bad. because you losers. Actually, 7.4. No, yeah. stop. It's Actually. Not, don't let it go below mine. I'm going to let it go all the way to the sunken place. No, it deserves Wait, wrong movie. between 7.5 <laughs> and 8 from you. Um, okay, fine. 7.6. Thank you. That's a good one. 7.6. Um, I would recommend it to Jordan Peele fans and fans of horror and um, people who want to think a little bit, but maybe not too much more than Dennis, but less than Zach. <laughs> Sweet spot. 
Fair. Okay. Uh, I think the conversations allowed me to... Actually, this conversation has pushed the score below five, but no, I'm weird nice job, and do weird things. I do mental gymnastics on the show all the time. So. We, I can explain the plot holes now. It's a good movie. <laughs> There's no plot holes. <laughs> I've covered them with yeah. dirt. Um, I'm going to land it probably like a 5-3. I think it gets a lot of that just from it being shot in the same way as some of my favorite movies. It having some you know neat concepts involved too. It's nice to look at. It's really good. The story was fine. The story was a little less than fine for me. It wasn't what I prefer. 4.9 actual final score. Whoa. I was so Recommend confused by that roller coaster. Me, you and scoring. I both. <laughs> Recommended to Jordan Peele fans, but... Uh, but you I'd, love I'd Jordan point, Peele. I know. I would point you to both of his other movies that are already out first. I don't think I'm going to ever rewatch this one. You're going to go to bed tonight knowing you gave a Jordan Peele movie below a five. So you, that means you're saying a Jordan Peele movie is bad. Yeah, you're not a fan. Bad. You're not a fan. And I'm that's a fan. fine. Okay, fine. I'm a fan of his other two movies then. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I've seen confirmation. I haven't seen a single Key and Peele sketch on purpose. Mm. I love Key and Peele. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about director Jordan Peele. He directed those. You know what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're really walking on a tightrope here. Also, I'm reducing my score to a 7.4 because that's what my heart <laughs> wants it to be. Well, after all that, I'm going to have the highest score here, which is hilarious. <laughs> is it hilarious? Um, yeah, so keeping my score at a 7.5, um, as much as all the shit I've talked about, I definitely enjoy this movie. It has everything you want in a Jordan Peele movie. So like they said, recommend this to any Jordan Peele fans. Um, shot beautifully well. Dennis said it right. It's really good to look at. Beautifully well. <laughs> shot beautifully well. <laughs> That's a saying. People say that. You say that. Yeah, you say that. Beautifully well. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to start saying it more. Well, fully beautiful. Um, it's such a, like, I don't know, it's, just a, it's a stylistic movie. It's like a vibe in a way. Like, music's really cool. It has your Jordan Peele caricatures, if you will. Um, Lupita was freaking incredible. Uh, and yeah, I always ha always have to give movie props to when kid actors aren't fuck ups, and that was not the case here. It was great, um, but yeah, but I still had issues with the story and script. It just wasn't cohesive, uh, cohesive enough for me. It wasn't tight like Get Out was. Um, it just felt like a bunch of ideas, kind of just not perfectly woven, uh, which I think Jordan Peele is more than capable of, which he has proven. Uh, so, so no, not a tapestry. Not a tapestry. Uh, but yeah, but still, as a horror fan, I love the horror elements we got in this. Some cool slasher scenes. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm going to keep it at 7.5. Uh, yeah. All right. Fair enough. Um, also, thanks for trying to boost my score so you didn't have to be in the middle. Because you like to be in the middle. You don't want to be the high. Yours deserve a 7.6 based on your initial viewing. Shut up. Uh, that might be true. And there's probably a loose sleep over it tonight. Um, all right. Next week, we are watching a huge movie. The most anticipated movie of the year, probably, for a lot of people. Potentially. Of of Q1, for sure. Absolutely. Um, which is Dune Part 2. Denise's follow-up to Dune that we just did last week. And... Uh, like we said at the beginning of the podcast, reviews say we're in for a treat, so it should be a good one. Very excited. Who's buying the popcorn bucket? Um, I'm going to do dirty things with the popcorn bucket. <laughs> uh, all right. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Litterbox. Please review this podcast wherever you're listening to it. We want to know the love or the hate. Tell us you hate us. It always is something. Uh, follow us on social media, Letterbox, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok coming soon. We love you. Catch you on the next one. Later. Goodbye. Goodbye.